you know, burns is a he committed arson. I think arson is the term for the desecration of a grave. I think yeah, that's like a felony too. There's a lot. There's a lot going on there. So anyway, the um, the next night. Well, actually, we'll get to that after the fact. So that was that was that match. And they kind of threw out Heath Slater and Kurt Hawkins, yeah. which was. I kind of actually appreciated that a little bit for like them trying to make it seem like a realistic situation where they weren't, they didn't really know what to do because of that. So like, I'll just put these guys out there. And I think one of them came out was like still lacing up their boots. One guy was putting like tape yeah. on his wrists or whatever. Hawkins came out with no boots on. He's later with tape on his wrists. Yeah. It was stuff like that. But that was. Could they have showed us the finish of the match though? Cause like you heard they were showing Braun coming out and you heard the finish of the match and they didn't show it. So that was That's tough for Heath, I guess, getting a win on pay-per-view though. Good for him. Yeah. Poor Kurt Hawkins. Yeah. No good. Some must die for others to live. <laughs> so the main event was Brock Lesnar against Samoa Joe. Here we go. Um, they started – so before the match started, Joe attacked him and uh, attacked Lesnar and got him on the outside and, and put him through a table. Um, so the match started out pretty fast-paced. Uh, crowd was hot for it. Brock ended up you know, kind of stumbling and recovering and getting back in the ring. They started the match, and Joe kind of dominated for the most part. The um, match only went about six and a half minutes, but Joe – was relatively dominant throughout. I mean, Brock got some spots in with his suplexes in the middle, but Joe uh, was mostly on the offensive, including getting the uh, the choke on him on Lesnar several times. Um, it's the coquina clutch. The coquina clutch. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a chokehold. It's technically not a chokehold. It's a it's a blood choke. It's not an air choke, so it's not technically classified as a chokehold. It's more of a sleeper. You should probably call it something different than a blood choke. Then, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not a. I'm not a, you know, they call a, a dictionary. Do they say it was a blood? I don't know if that's what you said. Yeah, it is. is it? See, the coquina clutch, they're cutting off the carotid arteries, which apparently is allowed, but you're not allowed to cut off the air supply because that can kill you. So that's why they stop you from choking people in the ring in certain situations. Okay. I'm a mark. That being said, uh, Samoa Joe had Lesnar in the choke several times. Lesnar seemed like he was going out, but he ended up catching him or honestly sort of breaking out of the choke and hit him with an F5 and then won the match in about six and a half minutes. I guess the goal of the match here was they wanted to keep the title on Brock, but they wanted to keep Samoa Joe at least looking strong, you know, in the you know, him having the advantage over Brock and, and kind of getting the upper hand on him for most of the match and then just losing to Brock's big move at the end. So, um, up for debate, I guess, on whether that was effective or not, but that's what they were going for. And uh, Brock ended up retaining the Universal Championship for you know another show. I want to hear your opinions on it before I give mine because I watched this. I watched um, great big balls like over three days in different parts. So I think I actually enjoy Trilogy. yeah, <laughs> like Lord of the Rings. I think I actually enjoy pay per views more that way, and maybe I have a better outlook on it because it's not like you're sitting through three hours at once. So I would like to hear what you have to say about this match before I give my critiques. Um, I mean, I thought it wasn't a bad match. I thought it was an exciting match. I mean, in a similar vein to how the Goldberg Lesnar matches were only a little bit, a little bit longer, obviously, because Joe's a much more polished worker than, than Goldberg is, especially these days. But, um, you know, I think my expectations going in were that Lesnar was going to keep the championship. I didn't really give Joe much of a chance to win here. Um, so, I mean, it kind of stinks that they almost, I don't want to say booked themselves into a corner, but almost that's, that seems like essentially what happened because Joe got so over and so much momentum in the build to the match that it was almost at a point where you really probably shouldn't have lost, uh, but that's not what their their plan is, and you really can't have Lesnar losing that often anyway. So as far as what they were going for, I thought they did a, a solid job of making Joe look strong by getting the upper hand on Lesnar early, attacking him putting through a table on the outside, securing the choke several times, um, and Lesnar just kind of barely escaping and getting out of it and winning. Um, so I thought that part was effective. I wouldn't have minded seeing them go a little bit longer uh, than six and a half minutes. So uh, I would like my main events to be at least like 10 minutes if I, if I can get that. Um, so, and I'm sure these two are both capable of doing that. Uh, so I don't know why they, they only made it go six and a half minutes. Uh, so I would have liked it to be a little bit longer. But in terms of the outcome and the booking of it, I, I, I'm not going to really complain about it because I think that's just – I knew Lesnar was going to win, so I just kind of left it. I, I kind of accepted it for what it was. I thought – you know, I'm buying into – I'm buying into the Lesnar hype. I'm buying into the Lesnar big fight feel because before that match, before those guys came out, I think it was – you know, the atmosphere was there. It was kind of like a Mike Tyson fight back in the day. Like you didn't know what was going to happen, and that's kind of what they're doing with Lesnar – you don't know if he's going to bloody the guy up. You don't know if he's going to run through him in 90 seconds. You know, 
there's an air of uh, mystique, I guess, around it. The problem I have is in the layout of the match with Brock Lesnar. The only moves he did this entire match were shoulder bumps in the corner and uh, German suplexes and then the F5. I'm tired of the suplex city. I've said it before. I'll say it again, especially in this kind of match. You have a guy like Samoa Joe that can bump around. He can take different suplexes. He, he's a very capable worker. I'm sick to death of just the soup, the, the German, the German, the German, the German. You got to stop with it. Um, now, I completely agree with you. The WWE did a phenomenal job on making Samoa Joe look like a complete badass. And I think he um, – I, I think he – actually should have won this match um it was okay that he lost but i would not have had samoa joe pinned in the main event of this show and that was that his first pinfall loss no rollins pinned him with a roll-up in their one-on-one match i think a couple years ago okay all right well in a couple of years ago pay-per-views ago oh pay-per-views ago okay I don't know. I just I don't want to say it kills momentum but you know i bought into the fact that samoa joe could beat brock lesnar and i i just even I would have accepted some kind of fugazi finish where, you know, Lesnar had the, was in the choke and he jumped back and then Samoa Joe's shoulders down and they got the three count that way. But I just think one F5, I don't know where I get in the pin. I thought it was a weak finish personally. However, the whole show as a whole, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it top to bottom. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give it a B. Yeah, I'd probably go um... – B minus, I'll say B minus on the show. Um, it's probably about three, three of the matches that I, I enjoyed very much, and the rest of it was kind of okay or whatever. Um, the rest of the way, so not a bad effort from them. Certainly, there's been there's been worse shows, so they have some solid stuff on there, and now they're going to build up the SummerSlam. Yeah, we'll, we'll, you know the build up the SummerSlam. That's going to lead us right into our Raw breakdown. But before we get to that, we want to remind you of a couple of things. A we are the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast, and we are the official podcast of ProWrestling.com, no matter what anybody else tells you. We are brought to you by the Damage 365 Radio Network. This is Lanny Poffo, formerly the genius full of glory and renown. You are listening to Damage 365 Radio. And we are back. Uh, where were we? We've, we hit all the spots. I want to tell you about our Twitter and our Instagram at all night long WP and our Facebook, facebook.com slash all night long WP. You could also follow pro wrestling. You could subscribe to pro wrestling.com on YouTube. So if you decide to watch us, well, watch, do you really watch a show or do you listen to the show? I mean, whatever they prefer. We know, give you options. Options. We give you content. Exactly. You guys absorb it. And hopefully you like us. You rate us. You subscribe to us. You talk about us. You, uh, you know, you like one of my pictures. You say, hey, nice beard. Hey, Joe, biceps looking good. Lots of options out there. Maybe. maybe. I don't bring anything to the table, yeah. You know, you're selling yourself short. Now, listen, we said we are going to talk about Monday Night Raw. What do you think? The only thing I guess I'll just say about Raw generally is, you know, they, they set up some stuff for next week. The two things majorly were – they have a Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe number one contenders match for next week where the winner will face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. And then they also have seemingly teased the final end of the Kurt Angle personal problem, text message, cell phone, Corey Graves, hair gel, Page. turtle wax. Del Rio. Nope. I don't. Nope. We're not, we're not, not going there, huh? Not getting into the Del Patron. Nope. Not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to stay away. Um, Until all the facts are out. I just, it's just a bad story, and I just don't even want to. I'm already. Hey, hey, I guess neither one of them are out of the woods yet. Am I right? There it is. I, I like that. I appreciate that. That was good. Thanks. I, I do like that. I sat on that one for a little um, bit. Just like Paige. So that so, was. The, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so those are the two things, I think, uh, as far as Raw was concerned, that I, I took away from it. Um, so I think Reigns and Joe will be a very good match next week. I, I do kind of have a feeling where they're going with that, but we'll see how it plays out next week. And I have no idea where the Kurt Angle thing is going to end up. I just really hope it doesn't have to do with Stephanie McMahon. If we can avoid that, I would really appreciate it. Um, but I, I we'll see. I heard somebody's idea. It's not a spoiler, but can I, uh, you can say what it is. Sure. It's, this is not my idea. I read it on a website. I have no idea whose it was. So I'm not giving that person credit. Nor do I care. Was but it I'm, up rocks? No. Okay. I think it was X hamster. That's not. No, you shouldn't be visiting those sites. That's not. 
It was on the I'm bottom. To be good Christian boys. That's not. I'm, I'm censoring my ears. What was your idea? Uh, or not, idea no, you thank you. What was my idea? That next week on Raw, you're going to see Dixie Carter. I did hear that. I did hear that. You did a, um, because they're in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is apparently where Dixie's from. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't. Did not realize that. Did um? I will say I saw somebody post something on Twitter, um, and Charmel, who's Booker T's wife, I think either retweeted it or, or commented out, and it was a picture of like if two people, you know, uh, got together, what their child would look like, and it was a picture of Charmel and Kurt Angle. I guess they were speculating that maybe Charmel was the mystery person, and the the trial that they would have had was Jason Jordan and it looked exactly <laughs> like, <laughs> like somebody like if they had gotten together, you know, I, I was actually like, thinking Aaron Judge were you saying that I was not, thinking yeah, of an Aaron Judge that is how, oh my god that so is I don't know I want to find that and retweet it now so that's so that's what's going on in Raw it was it was a very lackluster show match wise so there's really not much to break down but it should be it's going to lead to something interesting next week speaking of something interesting we are back with this week's edition of the five count And this week, what we are doing is we are giving you our five best matches of the year 2017 so far. I I can't wait to hear your list. Stop, I stop looking at my list. I'm not looking at your list. You're looking. This is me. I'm already I'm already aggravated. So I want to just let's just bring it on. Do you want to go first? Or do you let's want me do to go this. First? Actually, I'm going to tell you something right off the bat. I excluded both Omega versus Okada matches from my list. Why? Because I don't want to argue with you on air anymore about them. <laughs> I put in my mind I would have them on there, but I took them off the match because they are a source of great discomfort. It's like talking about politics on here. So I took that match off the list for you. Okay. Appreciate that. Thanks. You're welcome. Why don't you start? What You want to sneak it? You go five. I'll go five, four. You go, okay. You start with number five. I put Omega oh, versus Okada. Oh, just kidding. Not at five, no. I I, uh, I tried to you know I wanted to make sure my list was uh, diverse um, in terms of different promotions and, and styles and things like that. So I was looking at I looked back at all the major cards uh, of this year. I did this exact same thing because my list. I looked at it. and I was like, I need some more diversity. Yeah, it, I, off the top of my head, I think I only came up with like three matches. So I'm like, I really got to look. And uh, it's been a long year when you think about it, right? Yeah, it's, it's, there's been a lot. Right? So I went through all the WWE shows. I went through all the NXT shows. I went through all the Ring of Honor shows. I went through some of the New Japan shows. I, there was only uh, – the only Impact show was in July, so I didn't really, there wasn't really much there as far as pay is concerned. Anyway, the fifth match I have on the list, I put a Ring of Honor match on, and it was a triple threat tag match from the anniversary show in March. It was the Hardys versus the Young Bucks versus Rapungi Vice in a Las Vegas street fight. So I just kind of looked at all the different ROH shows and at least the ones that were aired. And uh, of all the matches on the on the shows for this year, I, I enjoyed that one, I think, the most. I just remember watching it. Um, that short run that the Hardys had. Was, we watched it one together, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was a great match. The short run that the Hardys had, I felt like, was very uh, very good in Ring of Honor. And obviously the Young Bucks and the Punky Vice are both uh, good teams. I think this was the match where... Uh, Rocky Romero had like that sleeve of thumbtacks on. Oh and he was, man, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Clothes on. So I remember that match being really good. I mean, there's a lot of matches probably similar to that that Ring of Honor's put on, especially involving similar wrestlers and teams. But I do remember liking that one, so I, I put that one at number five. That's a good call. That's not on my list, but it could be. Um, I did the same thing as you. I made my list and I looked around and I'm like, I need to get a little bit more diverse in here. I also went with number five as a Ring of Honor match. I have Will Ospreay versus Jay White from Ring of Honor World of the Worlds. Um, I was there front and center for that match. I was there front row, and that was a um, – watching that was exciting. I, I went back and I watched it when I got home, and I've watched it multiple times since then. Um, I think that was – Kind of Jay White's singles coming out party. He, um, you know, he phenomenal match. And Will Ospreay, obviously, it was one of his, you know, stronger style matches. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, that was in New York City. Number four actually is another uh, Ring of Honor match. And this one, I don't think it's going to make your list, but it might if you think about it. Um, Jay Lethal versus Bobby Fish from the Ring of Honor uh, 15th anniversary show. Not a match on paper. You look at it like, oh, man, this match is going to be amazing. But, you know, Two very, very technical guys. They worked a very smart match, a lot of psychology, and it was something that I just – I watched so many times I can't even remember. That was so, – that's number four on my list. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, no, I remember that match being very good. I think I looked at that. There was a bunch of matches, like a handful of matches that I had come up with that didn't make the, you know, the five. That Do you I have picked. honorable mentions? 
I did. I have a couple. Yeah. I have nine. Nine. Yeah. That's all. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to say that's extensive. I'm just kidding. I have Um, four. 